Hello, Angelo. Hey, Jay, you're back home. I am. I'm back in my regular spot. Uh, Rhea said she's not coming on visually because she's got her hair in rollers. <laughs> I, I see you're connecting. I, I'm not. I'm here. You. Hey, Rhea, I, I just had an image of you in, in rollers, and I don't know why that made me laugh. I, I, well, I, I actually got my hair done, uh, but I don't have makeup on. So I don't appear in public without makeup except at 4 o'clock in the morning when I see Angela. I totally right. Fair understand. enough. Uh, we have <laughs> flowers on our screen. Yes, yeah. Clark put that on for some reason. I don't know why, but you know. Good job, Clark. Good job. <laughs> <laughs> All right, you guys ready to just hop right in? We it? are ready. Boy, are we ever. <laughs> All right, and welcome back to the TV show. Joined as always by Angelo Cataldi and Rhea Hughes. Guys, how are you? We're great. Wonderful. We, ju we, we just did four hours of radio. Rhea does it every Wednesday, but I never do, and I'm tired. <laughs> <laughs> well, we could we could speed through this then. I don't want to make you no guys problem. Talk. I love talking TV. I'm never too tired to do that. Uh, so, well, I mean, let's let's just hop right into it because uh, we had a discussion uh, about uh, uh, I guess it was uh, two weeks ago. Maybe it was just last week. Tulsa King is uh, 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 we talked about with uh, with Sly Stallone. Angelo, I take it you've had a chance to watch Tulsa King. I got to tell you, all right, first of all, I have never liked Sly Stallone in anything but Rocky, and probably <laughs> because I loved Rocky so much. And now he's going to be a mobster doing his first TV show ever. Right. I didn't think there was a chance this would be any good. And I, they only, sh they're not giving you the whole binge. No, no gotta, week by week. I only got the first episode. I am totally hooked. I love Really? Him. I yeah. love him as a mobster. He just, he has that look like a mobster. Yeah. And uh, it, he even, he's 75 in the show, Rhea. And he has sex in the first episode with a woman. And <laughs> then he tells her his age afterwards and yes. she's so creeped out <laughs> she can't leave the room fast enough <laughs> no it's okay, that's terrific. pretty funny uh, jay you've seen it do you like I, it i've seen the first two episodes i just watched the latest episode uh last or this this morning actually and i really do you know what i was thinking about it's one of those shows and it, it's maybe a throwback to it's not trying to do too much like it's yeah. there's not like a lot of secret past going on. I mean, he's got a whole thing with his daughter and everything else. But the mobster stuff, it's funny. It's it's just like, hey, do you like this guy? Everybody likes Sly, Sly Stallone. Let's hang out with yeah. him while he beats up guys at a pot dispensary. You know, it, <laughs> it's just <laughs> fun. Hey, he's seventy five, and he throws something at a guy and knocks him out. Then yep. later in the show, he punches a guy and knocks him out. And I'm going, he has a better punch now than he did when he was in Rocky. <laughs> well, I mean, I don't know what kind of uh, horse hormone that he's taking to stay that big. Yeah. But, uh, he is, he looks good, I have to say. He looks good for a 75-year-old guy. He does. He looks fantastic. And, and he has not been this engaging in forever. I, even in the later... You know the creeds and the the second wave of Rocky movies. He was kind of a secondary figure. He's the guy in this. He's the main character. He's in every scene, and he's unbelievably charismatic. I love it. I can't wait to see more. Yeah, it's a uh, second episode's really good. I I always like second episodes better than pilots because I like all the table clearing is is done and we just get to what we are is going to be the show. And I got to tell you, the the sidekick that he picks up, the 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 driver that he hires. Oh, uh, I love him. Yeah, we see a little bit of his home life in the second episode, and uh, he's he's a compelling character. Uh, also, the guy who runs the pot dispensary, Bodie, or Bodie, is uh, you might recognize him from Silicon Valley or the Spider Man movies. That is Martin uh, Starr. He was also in Part Party on. Uh, really funny, uh, low-key improv comedian, and I'm a big fan of his work, too. So all around, 
Good. But it you got you, you thinking, Angelo, and it's it's a uh, it's a good question to ask. Stars that are movie stars that have yeah. made the transition into TV, because this is not something we saw in the 80s and 90s. Mm -hmm. uh, like when Sybil Shepard did it in the 80s, it was because like, you know, things weren't going great in her career. So she's right. like, step down to TV. Uh, it used to be TV was a ghetto and movies were the place that you wanted to be. But now uh, with the rise of prestige TV and especially TV that only runs a couple of months, you get big stars that are making the, the step into television. This is Sly's first uh, TV show. Did you guys have any picks for people that have made the transition well? Bria? Well, I, I mean, yeah, I, I mean, let's start with Jennifer Aniston. I mean, who oh. became a massive, massive movie star off of obviously Friends. And I don't think she's done a lot of great movies. Horrible Bosses is so phenomenal <laughs> what she's in there because she's America's sweetheart. And yep. in that movie, she's absolutely not. I, because people tell me all the time, that's more of a guy movie. I love her in that. I cannot yes. love her more in that. And I don't think she, like I said, I don't think she's done a lot of great movies. She's done good movies. That I loved her in. George Clooney from ER. I think some people yeah. forget that, I mean, ER was so great because, you know, in the first episode, it's him with the nurse. And Angela, I know you know her name because I know you love her. Um, uh, Juliana oh, Margulies. Yes, that's it. <laughs> that's it. And they have a star-crossed relationship that goes on. But I mean, he started, you know, as actually, I think he had some previous things, but what he's most known for on TV is uh, is ER. And those to me are, and one other one that I love, Robin Williams, because Mork and oh, Mindy yeah. was one of my all time favorite sitcoms. I absolutely mm -hmm. loved Robin Williams in that. And obviously he became a massive star. Huge star. Yeah. You know, Rhea, I'm glad you mentioned Jennifer Aniston and Horrible Bosses, because wouldn't she be a great evil character she was a so thousand percent did yeah. she ever play that role any other time because she was i don't awesome. think so i think i liked her more than that than anything she ever did and she was evil she was nasty and she was terrific in that role she here's what i think it is Angie. i think some people have their brands and yeah. her brand is america's sweetheart but i mm -hmm. will tell you she should do more of that because yes. it's one of my favorite movies ever you're right you're 100% right. The only one I wanted to add, Jay, was Nicole Kidman, because uh, she's a massive star in both media. She yeah. it, did big, 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 big movies. And she is also incredibly successful with Big Little Lies sure. and, and then with White Lotus the first season. She's done a ton of TV. And almost everything she does is quality. I, I like her in just about everything. Didn't yeah, she okay. start out in soaps in Australia? Maybe. I don't know. I, 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 mean, I just seem to. Soap star. Yeah. yeah. She was. Wow. I think so. I, I, I think so. Yeah. Uh, so one thing I will say about uh, Nicole Kidman, the only thing I don't like her in Angelo, I know you don't go to the movies uh, in the movie theater. She's in that AMC ad that they made fun of. She looks the, weird. Uh, yeah. It's a weird thing where she just yes. talks about the power of the movies. I go to see a lot of movies in the theater. I've seen that AMC ad no less than 200 times. Oh. And every time I see it, I'm ready to jump out the theater. If well, I, Jay, it's because it her time, face doesn't move. It her does face not move. doesn't move in it. It's more Botox <laughs> than Australian movie yes. star at this point. And if, right, they had, if they had a movie where you paid $5 extra not to see that opening, yes, I would in. pay it. All right, Rhea, listen, I don't yep. think you yep. should see Tulsa King because Sly, Stallone, Sly Stallone's face does not move. It is well, frozen in time. <laughs> I get that, but she's trying to sell passion for the movies. Yeah. And if your face isn't showing an expression, it's a little <laughs> bit hard to do. <laughs> so true. Well, the thing about <laughs> the the the, the, St the Stallone thing right now, his eyebrows. Oh, was man. Like, we we botoxed up your face so much, your eyebrows don't move. So let's just like make them look like they're moving. So it looks like the <laughs> the, the flames on the side of a truck or something. It's just a weird look. <laughs> Uh, the one that I have is a, a reverse transition of late. Uh, Julia Roberts has starred in two TV shows yeah. for um, uh, Sam. I want to say it's not Elliot. It's uh, the guy who did uh, uh, Mr. Robot. Uh, he She did uh, Homecoming with him and yes. Gaslight. I can actually bring it up. Um, 
Sam, I can't find it right now, but she was in that, uh, both of those. And the idea 10, even 10 years ago that a star of Julia Roberts level would one day do TV is insanity. Uh, can I tell you why? Jay, and I'll tell you the reason why, which only I would get this, I think, out of the two of you, is they have, she, Jennifer Aniston doesn't, but Julia Roberts and other stars of her ilk, they have young kids. TV provides oh. more of a, uh, you know, movie, when you do a movie, you're on set, you know, maybe somewhere in like, you know, London or wherever for four to five months. TV provides more of a stability for, I think, you know, and, and I'm not saying not guys either. You know, because I hear it from them. I have small children. I like knowing I'm going to work at eight o'clock in the morning and I'm coming home at six o'clock at night for a yep. certain period of time. See, that's different for me because the whole reason I do movies is to get away from my family. <laughs> I, they said two weeks. I said, could we do three? Just let, let's figure it out. <laughs> All right. So uh, speaking of family, let's let's move on because my son and I, my son was so excited about this documentary and he was like, hey, dad, have you ever heard of this? I remember when this happened, when it was in the news in the late 90s. There's a new documentary on Netflix called Where's My Jet? And uh, if you don't know the story, a kid, there, there was a commercial in the 90s about uh, Pepsi points. It was like Camel Bucks. You guys, my, my grandmother yeah. used to connect, connect uh, Camel Bucks. She never got to spend- <laughs> My grandma did Pal Mal. <laughs> Pal Mal, yeah. Yeah, my, my grandmother not, never got to fender, spend her Camel Bucks because she died of cancer. Uh, there was a, one of those funny jokes of like camel bucks. Like if you save up enough, you can buy like hiking boots. It's like, who's hiking and smoking five packs of camels a day, but that's a separate story. Anyhow, you would, you drink the Pepsi, you would get the points. And there was a commercial that said, Hey, if you get 120 points, you can get a leather jacket. You get 50 points, you get a t-shirt. And the end of the commercial, they had a fake Harrier jet come down and they said for 7 million points, you get a Harrier jet. Well, there was no like little thing that pops up that says, hey, we're just kidding. It was just like a commercial. So uh, a kid, uh, well, I say kid, he was 20, knew this rich guy. They put it together. They spent $700,000 to get 7 million Pepsi bucks. And they sent it in saying, hey, we want the jet. And the documentary <laughs> is a discussion of what happened to lead up to that and the fallout. Uh, I watched it. I thought it was great. Angelo, you saw it as well. I got to tell you, Jay, um, it's a documentary in the whole time, four episodes. Yeah. You can't believe this is a real story. <laughs> no, you like, can't. The, the first episode, you got this character who's giving the kid the money. And that guy is bigger than life. He's He's, I love that guy. I love that him. guy great? Oh, I God. wish I had a friend like that guy. Oh, they should give and him a show. Just when you think, all right, they now they're going to milk it. Who comes along? But the lawyer for Stormy Daniels, Michael <laughs> Avenatti, who was, is a nut. Right. Oh, is he crazy? And this is when he had here. This is yeah. 20 years ago. And then you're going, well, oh, where are they going to go from this? And who shows up? Manny Pacquiao. The <laughs> boxer's in it. And you keep going, this is a real story? Is it this somebody that just took drugs and had a hallucination? <laughs> <laughs> Most amazing story ever. Although I'm not going to give away the ending, but I'm going to say this. I was angry at the end. I was, I was angry at very the end. angry. I Furious. wanted more. Very angry. But it was great. And you, it is, I love documentaries that it's Pepsi, Where's My Jet? And it is phenomenal on I Netflix. I'll tell you, the end of the second episode is when Avenatti shows up. My son, who's 15, jumps up and goes, <laughs> that can't be true. There's no way that that's true. And I said, I guess it was. I had no idea. And one of the things they do about this documentary, and a lot of times I don't like this in a doc, is they recreate all this stuff that yeah. happens. They don't have footage. But I yep. really liked that it. it worked for this documentary. It, it was it looked very sitcom -y almost with how they did it. And I will say the buddy who raised the money, um, you know, at the end, I was real worried about what was going to happen to him. And yeah. it, it, it turned out, Okay, but my God, he was fantastic. I would have sat through and watched an entire episode of just him telling stories because they don't tell uh, you where he made his money. Nope. I, I told you I did uh, movies with Florida businessmen who were uh, finding money in very odd places. So whenever I hear <laughs> Florida businessman, I go, 
well, maybe he doesn't want to talk too much about how he made his yeah. money, but uh, yeah, it's great. Did you get a chance to look at it at all, Rhea? No, and but I'm listening to you that your 15 year old son watched it, so I think I'm going to watch it with Clark this weekend because yeah. Clark and I have a discussion all the time about commercials, and right. he'll say to me now because you know he's the YouTube kid, and he goes, "Well, I can't believe this has commercials," and I sit him down, Angela. I do what you always do. Yeah. I sit him down and I explain, "You have a home." and food <laughs> because of commercials yeah. in this family we love commercials yeah. i think he's going to love it Rhea. i really do it's, because it's, it's really too. Yeah. it's a kid who saw in a, a commercial and thought it was real and you know yeah. and the people that represent pepsi i'm never drinking another pepsi i'm oh not the, they're <laughs> awful my son said the same thing angela he got done he was like I don't think I like Pepsi. And I was like, well, a lot of billion dollar companies are not great, but the way these guys came off, they came off as slimy 25 oh. years after. Yeah. So they were like, they kept going, well, I don't know if I remember that being the way it was, but uh, you know, maybe. And you're like, come on guy. Like it's, I like the ad exec who yeah. 25 years later said, all right, yeah. I'll tell you what really happened. You know? Yeah. Oh, that, that was great. great. He said, yeah. I've never told this. Here's the real story. And he tells you the real story. That was the best moment in the whole doc. It yeah. was great. And then, oh. yeah, so I don't want to ruin it, but you know, but that does lead to a good thing because uh we you know we've this is our 11th episode. We've done a lot of recommendations. And I'm going to reveal to you right now the best recommendation that I've gotten for my family because I showed it to my wife. And she immediately watched all eight episodes in like two sittings. And it was Rhea's uh, 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 instant home makeover, instant, what was the name of it, Rhea? Oh, uh, uh, oh God. Um, instant Dream oh God. Home. Instant Dream Home. Instant Dream Home. Instant Dream Home. I Phenomenal. Said her, after the show Wednesday night, I said, uh, oh, hey, you know, Rhea said this is a good show on Netflix. And my wife put it on. And four hours later, she's like, I got to go to bed. Uh, and then she watched the rest of it the next day. And uh, I was just like, okay, there's been a lot of good recommendations. None have made it so that my entire family sat and watched a show for so uh, eight solid hours. Yeah. So good job there. I was wondering if you guys had any that you uh, got recommended to on the show that you wound up really loving. Well, Angie, I will, I will give you props because you love Welcome to Wrexham. I don't think there's a week that goes by that you don't bring it up. I yep. watched the first episode and I told you I wasn't drawn in. And I think it's because I love Ted Lasso. And I thought with Ryan Reynolds and uh, Rob McElhaney that there'd be more humor. But then when you said to me, these are basically Eagles fans no. with a Welsh accent. I said, okay, you know what? I'm going to go back and you're a thousand percent right. I'm on episode four. I just, it, I looked at it through a different lens. I was looking at it through, I'm going to be, um, it's going to be comedic and, and it's really a documentary. So I had to look at it through a different lens and, uh, and I really like it. Yeah. I think the connection to Eagles is what made it for me because yeah. it's yeah, so yeah. similar. And I know it's what got Rob McElhenney involved. He wanted yeah, yeah. a team that he could own that had that kind of a fan base. And I, I still think it's a great watch. It's a great watch. I'll just give you mine. Cause uh, even though I have now bailed on because it jumped the shark. All right. But Jay, I know you told us to see Never Have I Ever, right? Oh, and, yes. And it was really good. And then the the thing that I loved the most about it was that they had John McEnroe as the narrator. Yes. And I thought he was so good. I, I wanted to hear him. He was funny. It was great the way they used him. And then he suddenly appeared in an episode. I don't know if it was the second or third season. Yeah. And he jumped. it jumped the shark. It went... No, no, he's the overviewer. He's not in the actual. Episode. But you didn't love that he helped get her to down to the sand, down to the no. beach. I don't want to give anything up. I mean, I thought it was a poignant moment, and I liked that he appeared. That was I the. Uh, it, was, it, was the it, it was the me. last episode of the first season, and the only yeah. way I would defend it is this: at the time, they might not have known they were getting a second season, so that would be <laughs> fitting uh, the yeah. to the, oh. the series if that was it. So. That Here's was where I'll tell you would jump the shark for me, Ange. Yep. And I love that show. The acting is phenomenal. The minute the nerdy girl gets the hot guy, yeah, you've now gone into TV land for me. And it doesn't, uh, it, I was like, yeah, no, nah. you know, to me, it's always trying because I think she should be with the other guy. Yeah, maybe that's yeah, just my too. own personal thing. Uh, you're 100% the other guy. Yeah, I never bought that that guy loved her or liked her. No. 
was no. attracted to her. I never brought I ne that was a bogus no. part of the story. You're right. Yeah. My big problem with this, that guy looks like he's uh, 38 and everybody else is. A yes. Teenager. <laughs> Boy, but he's good looking. Jack. He's a good looking he's guy. Really, but, really. But every Every time he's on screen, I'm always doing comments where it's like, hey, I'd love to do calculus with you, but I got to drop my kids off at uh, basketball. <laughs> you know, I, I got to get back. It's tax season. You know how crazy tax season is. Yes. Yeah. yes. Uh, all right. So we have uh, actual teen corner, and I think you're combining it this week with the British corner, right, Rhea? I was going to. So, you know, I, you know I'm on Prime and Netflix all the time. And on Prime, they kept pushing the, the, sh the movie, The People We Hate at the Wedding. I'm a huge Allison Janney fan. I love her. I just think she's awesome. And I, I just, so I said, and it, they, they presented it in all of the previews as kind of a slapstick comedy. And most of it is based in London. And I said, oh, this is phenomenal. I'll watch it with Clark. And it's based in London. And we'll, you know, we'll marry the two. Well, um, we made it, uh, I believe, 17 minutes. Most huh. of it, Clark had his, uh, it, let me announce very right now. It's absolutely not for a 13 and a half year old because <laughs> there's a massive sex scene very early on and he was under the pillow, you know, because he's sitting next to his mom. How horrible yeah. is that? But I mean, I went and looked it up. It's got a 26 rating on mm. Rotten Tomatoes. It's so awful. It's not funny. I mean, there is there is definitely stuff there, but it was just, I mean, and again, we only watched 17 minutes of it before Clark said, absolutely not. So I pivoted real quick. I said, I got to get him something that he likes. Now, I don't know the guy's name. I don't know how to pronounce it, but I'm a huge fan of Kim's Convenience Store. And, um, uh, and so I pivoted over to that only because the son in that show is a Marvel guy. I don't know how to pronounce his name. He's one of the newer Marvel uh, movies. And I said, okay, I can get Clark into this. Watch three episodes with him. He laughed the entire time. So, you know, it what's was, the name I, I mean, again, Rhea? Give us the name of that. Kim's Convenience Store. And now I'm blanking. I didn't write it in my oh, notes. I apologize. It's, uh, it's Sim, Simalu. Uh, uh, the, the, he uh, plays uh, Shang-Chi now, right? Yes. Yes. And Clark. So Clark was willing to watch it because, you know, he's a big Marvel guy. Is it on? I, I'm, I apologize. Is it Prime or Netflix? Um, it is I, on. I'm looking for it. Uh, you know, it's it's doing that thing where Wikipedia is telling you where it played in Canada. It's like, come on. Wikipedia. Oh yeah, because it is. I'm, it is a connect. It's at based out of Toronto. I get it, but I'm America. Wikipedia, come on, get your act together. But uh, but it's really it's a funny show. Uh, Kim's Convenience Store is basically it's an Asian family, a Korean family. I'm sorry, living in Toronto, and it's uh, mother and father, son and daughter running a convenience store and family life. And it is one, it's, I think four seasons. I absolutely love it. And my son loved it. So it's uh, absolutely Netflix. Netflix. Yes. Um, so, and real quick, I do have a British show. I found a British right. show very quick. It's four episodes. You can binge it easy this weekend. Uh, Innocent. It is on prime on acorn. Uh, very simple premise. Guy gets out of jail after seven years in a technicality accused of killing his wife. And he's going to find out who actually killed her. And like, we've seen this show a thousand times. I just finished it last night. Loved it. Only four episodes. Really good. I, that sounds good. I want to try yeah. it out. Yeah. Uh, just speaking real fast, Rhea, of uh, watching sex scenes with your parents. I remember I was watching <laughs> with my dad. Do you remember <laughs> the third season of The Sopranos where uh, Tony has Isabella? I think it was uh, in the in the zoo. His crazy girlfriend, he has sex with her in like the monkey yes, house. Yes, yes. And I was watching with my dad and we both looked at each other and we were like, there was that moment of like, we're not talking about this. Let's just no, go. never again. Keep your eyes forward, <laughs> keep moving. Uh, but yeah, that was. it's always uncomfortable when that happens. All right. So we got, uh, Angelo, you have a show for us, correct? Oh boy, do I. And, and it's been around for a few weeks and I did, just missed the boat on it. Because I listen, Rhea just cited the um, Rotten Tomatoes numbers, yeah. and the numbers for this movie, the critics give it a thirty-four percent. Wow! And that said, I don't want to see it, even though I love the actress who's the lead character, Daisy Edgar Jones. The movie is where the crawdads sing, mm -hmm. and I was out until a guy we have on our radio show, Richard Glazer, called in. 
and he all but begged me to give it a chance. So I said, what the heck? I'll watch it. I love Daisy. I'll watch Daisy for a half an hour. There, there, uh, there was a great scenery, great cinematography. This movie is spectacular. Two really? hours. It combines genres. It's a it's a story about a woman who grows up in an abusive uh, family. Uh, all of her family members leave. She's stuck with her father. Um, eventually, she's on her own, living in the woods in a house that she doesn't even own. And the story is how she accommodates her lifestyle, how she adapts to being called the Marsh Girl. And what makes it so great is in the middle of the story, she's suddenly accused of a murder. Yeah. Wow. And then you have the then you have David Strathon who comes in and he is her lawyer. And it's kind of, you know, it's a it's a small town kind of setting. And it's got a killer twist. It's got a uh, you're not ready for it. It's wrapping up. <laughs> and then it zings you with a killer twist. And wow. at the end, and the, going, previews, the previews are phenomenal. I keep going. Oh. Do I want to watch it? Do I want to watch it? I keep, I keep, so I should watch it. Cause I, I'm drawn yeah. by the previews. It's it, even if the story weren't great, the, you should see how beautiful it is where they, they film this. It's, I've never seen anything like this. It's, it's part swamp, part marsh, with these beautiful trees and ah, oh, it's gorgeous. But the performance uh, is spectacular. The movie. So here's what I did though. Here's the kick around. I got a twist too, Jay. Here's <laughs> my twist. Yes. So it got a thirty four percent. You know what it got from viewers? What ninety seven percent? No way. People wow, who beautiful. watch it love it. The critics don't love it. Screw them. This <laughs> is a great film. Richard Glazer, our our bad movie guy, was right. It's fantastic. <laughs> bad movie guy. So what what I'll tell you is, I I remember when this came out, and I always follow the Hollywood box office. And this came out over the summer. Uh, I looked it up. It it was a twenty four million dollar budget. It made a hundred and forty million dollars. Wow, wow. Which is for a small like they don't make movies like that anymore. They either do Marvel movies or TV. For that to be released and make that kind of money, there was a word of mouth going on about that that uh, the critics could not kill. So as somebody Great. who likes Lifetime movies, I don't like to listen to the critics. So <laughs> this may be better than one of your Lifetime movies, Jack. Pro probably. There might be slightly, there's a slight <laughs> chance of that, Angela. Uh, so where the crawl deck said, where is that again? Uh, that is on uh, uh, Netflix. Netflix. Where the crawl deck said is on Netflix. All right. So uh, last thing I wanted to talk about, this is a big deal for me because I follow this stuff. I don't know if you guys saw, but Bob Iger, huge yep. twist. Chapik out at Disney just a few months after they gave him a new contract. You want to talk about wasting money. They gave oh. that guy a huge contract, put him out, Bob Iger back in, mostly because Disney Plus lost $1.5 billion last year. Wow. Which is shocking to me because everybody I know has Disney Plus. So, you know, if everybody's paying $10 a month for it, how much money are they sinking into this thing that it's it's losing it? Uh, so, yeah, I, I just wanted to say uh, Bob Iger coming back. I don't know what that does to the face of TV, but remember Disney owns Fox. It owns Hulu. It owns Disney Plus. It owns ESPN. So there is a lot of different moving parts that he's coming back uh, that we enjoy every week. So it, it'll be interesting to see. And I, and I do wonder with that $1.5 billion, right? Wow. Uh, that's a lot of money on, on, uh, original programming would be my guess. That's a lot of star Wars that I know Angelo doesn't watch. How much is on sports? Because isn't Fox the ones that are going to hire Tom Brady at like 375 million? Hmm. Well, well, yeah, but this is just Disney plus streaming though. Just this Disney. Okay. Disney gotcha. In general, oh this is God. just their streaming yeah. service. So my guess is they're just crushing it on original programming. And I'm wondering if Disney had just taken everything that was in the Fox library everything that was in the Disney library, and then just did a little bit of original programming, wouldn't every parent still have bought Disney Plus for yes. their kids? I mean, did they need to spend that much money on Marvel movies or That's Marvel TV problem. shows? If you're doing a Marvel movie, you're in for hundreds of millions automatically. Yeah. And yeah. then you don't know how popular it's going to be. How many of these before people are tired of them? 
Yeah, I don't get it. I, I, I have a 13 year old Angelo. They're not. I know. Them. And I'll, I'll just be honest kids, with you. So I'm going to keep Disney Plus, but I can't remember the last time I watched anything original on that station, on that uh, that streaming service. My yep. my daughters rewatch zombies. That's what my Disney Plus <laughs> exists for me as a zombies TV show machine that they watch day in and day out. But yeah, I I don't get it, and it just it just makes me think if Disney's having trouble as the the second biggest streamer with the most amount of money how i mean are we going to get to the end of tulsa king before paramount plus is pulled off like I, these oh i hope we do i got to see it and yeah. i got to see it i got to yeah. see stallone will probably get killed in the last episode yeah I mean, <laughs> he's 76 now <laughs> oh jeez may we all look so good at 76 though my god uh. okay. Uh, whatever whatever he's importing from uh, Russia to put in his bloodstream is uh, something we should all get. Anyway, guys, thank you so Let much me, for joining us. Hold Let's on, do- not yet, recap. Jay. I got to tell people what the recommendations this week. Kim's Convenience Store, Netflix, Innocent, Amazon P- Prime, uh, Pepsi, Where's My Jet, Netflix, Tulsa King, Paramount Plus, and where the crawdad sing is also on Netflix. And those are our big recommendations for the okay. week. Guys, maybe we should start recommending Disney Plus shows so it, uh, you know, uh, <laughs> can keep his job. Uh, all right, guys, thank you so much. Uh, this is our last show before Thanksgiving. Happy Thanksgiving to you both. Thank you. Happy Save Thanksgiving, you, Jay. Jay. All right. Have a good one, everybody. And we all right. Start. Take care, guys. Hey, See hey you real fast, before Bye-bye. everybody See goes, just real fast. Yeah. I'm on a boat next week and the week after. I'm doing yep. cruises. So I'm just going to record like little, um, uh, you know, uh, episodes saying, hey, we'll be back regular time in two weeks. So okay. perfect. That's right by you guys. I just, I'm going to be on the boat. So, okay. Uh, yeah, I appreciate I hope it. it doesn't Enjoy sing. Young Sheldon. <laughs> <laughs> this is the one. I'll come back. I'll tell you the three episodes of Young Sheldon I saw 12 times. <laughs> All right, guys. Have a great day. Have a good trip, Jay. Talk to you soon. Happy Thanksgiving, guys.